Hello, it's Harry Reasoner, and uh, today I'd like to tell you a true story. It was a few months ago, I was coming home from Walking Dave, and I decided to stop at the local uh, to have a pint or two. On the way into the place, I, I grabbed a paper out of the, the box, I went in, I found a table, ordered a beer, and I was just uh, cracking the newspaper open to uh, start reading, when a guy I had seen around before staggered up and plopped himself down and started to tell me his life story. The first thing out of his mouth was for him to tell me that his name was Jerry and that he was a Roman Catholic Jew. I sat there uh, pondering that and I've thought about it a number of times since. How confusing it must be to go through life a perfect mix of self-righteousness and self-loathing. Anyway, at, at one point he stumbled off to the washroom, presumably to take a leak, and I seized my chance. I chugged my beer, crumpled up my newspaper, and ran out the door. Now, when I got home, I, I forget actually what crisis was occurring, but I didn't get to read the newspaper, and it ended up folded on the corner of my workbench, and I only just recently discovered it. I was on a beer break, and uh, I decided to give it a read. On the front page is uh, an account of yet another Canadian soldier being killed in Afghanistan by religious nutjobs. Side by side with that article is a continuing report about more killings in Iraq between rival Islamic sects. Flipping the page I see the story of a woman going on trial uh, somewhere in the States. She'd been accused of killing her husband. You see he had been sexually, physically and emotionally abusing her for years. He was a Christian pastor. Turning over another couple of pages is uh, the entertainment section where Angelina Jolie is reported to be starring in a movie with the widow of a journalist killed by religious extremists in Pakistan. <laughs> what dedication. Starting to get a bit cold. You <laughs> dummy. <laughs> Oh, what a dumb dog. Oh. God, that must be cold. He got one. <laughs> what a dumb dog. Another flip of the page brings the story about Pope Benedict pissing off Aboriginal groups in the New World because of his suggestion that genocide, rape, slavery, theft, torture, and intentionally introduced diseases were indeed a very small price to pay for bringing Christianity to the red-skinned, uncivilized, unwashed savages. I flip the page again and see the story of uh, Islamic law in Iran with the uh, horrific accounts of the quite legal killings of teenage girls. Uh, apparently they committed the atrocity of speaking to boys in public. On the same page there's a letter to the editor from 
an impassioned reader, who argues that uh, here we should be funding religious schools because, after all, it is through religion that our children learn their morals. And sadly, I fear that that passionate writer is at least partly right. But there's something in that newspaper that gives me a little bit of hope. There's the story of a local girl who, despite personal adversity, has, through uh, extreme personal effort, raised a whole bunch of money to help impoverished people in Africa. Her efforts will result in the construction of not a church, not a monastery, or a nunnery, it won't result actually in even the delivery of a plain load of Bibles. It will result in the construction of a school. Nowhere in that story is any mention of religious affiliation or motivation. I suppose there is a chance that there is an underlying unmentioned religious element, but I want you to consider that there doesn't have to be. It may just be possible that that girl is acting out of true generosity. And not because of religion, but despite it. It seems to me that it is perhaps debatable the question of, of whether or not religion makes people do bad things. But we can say this, it certainly doesn't prevent them. This is Harry Reasoner. I still say that there's hope. <laughs>